Welcome Chicago Humanities Festival fans. My name is Monica Eng. I'm a reporter at WBZ and I'm so pleased to be here with you today talking to director Viktor Kosakowski, who created this wonderful film called Gunda that we're going to be talking about today. But first, here's the trailer. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, Victor, seeing that, that footage again, it just brings me back to watching the film. Thank you so much for making this brilliant film. Uh, now, I imagine not everyone in Hollywood is saying, hey, let's do a, a black and white film with no narration about farm animals. How did you conceive this and get backers? Listen, I immediately, I, I feel immediately um, confused because let me tell you, it, I maybe I'm kind of a little bit, I don't know how to say it. Listen, in your festival, you probably focus on problem of humans, right? And I feel like, forgive me for saying it, I feel like you will, we will never fix problem of humans until we understand that we are not alone in this planet. I feel, I feel like we will always mistreat each other, kill each other. We always make us miserable each other. We, we will always torture each other. We always invent uh, Novichok or Kalashnikov or something else or atom bombs until we understand that Act of killing is just act of killing, and act of torturing is act of torture. And it's not, it's not, not a question against whom we are doing it. We can make it against human or against animals, what we are doing every day, right? And, and we are accepting the fact that we are doing it. And this, this is the problem of humanity. We accepting the fact that we are able to kill someone if we need it. We accepting the fact we, we decided we are, for good purpose, we can even torture someone. If, we, if, if society needed, it, we agreed that there are some prisons. And so I guess this is the question. The question is, this is what Tolstoy said. It's not my, I, I don't want to be like philosopher. No, it's Tal Lev Tolstoy wrote in the end of his life. He said, he actually said it, 
we will never escape from these problems. We will be a little bit more lefty, a little bit more right, a little bit more communist, a little bit bourgeois, a little bit more this way, but problem will be not here anyway. Problem until we understand that we need to illuminate from our behavior, act of killing, act of aggression, after act of domination. If we, this is the problem. And, and animals, this is the subject because every day, the ones who are really mistreated are animals every day. The ones, the fact that we are killing billion pigs a year, isn't it horrible? Billion, not million, billion. Half billion cows a year, not million, billion. Have 50 billion chickens, 50 billion, trillion fish, trillion. Imagine what we are doing. So problem of humanity, perfect. Humanist human already did what he's supposed to do and we still stuck. Okay, 100 years ago in my country, in some part of my country was cannibalism for, because it was no food at all. It's not only in my country. There are places in the world, even 70 years ago, people, you know what happened 70 years ago? I don't want to name country because I don't want to make scandal here. Probably this information is quite forbidden. But what I tell you, 70 years ago, 80 years ago, in some countries, in some places in the world, people were exchanging, neighbors were exchanging children, uh, kids in order not to eat all one kids. So it was easy to eat kids of neighbor, children of, no, instead of yours. So people just were exchanging kids. And it was just around corner. It was not thousand years ago. It was less than hundred years. So you see, we are, I would say, and we live is, uh, we live and we continue, we continue inventing, we continue inventing weapons, we continue inventing the choke, atom bombs and all this shit. And we continue, continue, continue with violence. And of course, and as far as it's in, 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 inside us, we will not read away. We have to stop today because every day, every breakfast, every lunch, every dinner, you know, animal was just killed. And we feed our kids without explaining them. What happened to Gunda? I, I'm sure I show Gunda for kids and kids do not believe. So what they see, they stand up, they come to microphone. Why no one told me this? Why no, why? I said, hey, talk to your mom, talk to your father. <laughs> you know, this is what, so it's, I guess it's, uh, I guess we decided we are most important creatures in the world. And I guess it was a mistake. It was a mistake. And this is why we are paying such price. Uh, because everyone around had reason to be here. Most of, most of creatures around us born before us, million years before us. And we decided, no, we will dominate. It's absurd. It's absurd and it's a mistake. And this is why we will never decide. We will never rid of our problems because violence is inside of our behavior. And this is forever until we stop. We have to stop it in a minute, and that's all. We have to stop now. So the last time I did a Chicago Humanities Festival program, I was talking to Jonathan Safran Foer, the author for his book called We Are the Weather. And he argued for reducing our meat consumption for environmental reasons. So it seems like um, you're also driven by you know, the same, the same um, idea that we either need to reduce or stop eating animals. And, and so how did you decide that the best way to to make that argument would be for a non-narrated black and white film. Um, how did that come to you? Like if I, if I just show them the animals in their natural state, this will speak to people. How did you know that? Because it was many people, it was many films made differently. It was quite a lot of the last 20 years, what I, I 
in my mind, memory, like at least 30 films, uh, which was made opposite, like in, made in solitary houses. And uh, when we, we show how horrible life animals have and how they live in cages and all life and very short life and then how we kill them. So, and I, reali I realized that films are interesting, very good, but it didn't do a job. They didn't do a job. So, because it's not focused on animals themselves. It doesn't show how animals are, who they are. It doesn't show that animals are personalities of them. Each of them is personality. And each of them is, they're not something, they're someone. They're someone, each of them. And, and without this point, it's difficult to, and then we have, let's, let's be honest. Human have this ability to block and decide, we decided not to think about it. We have, we, you know, uh, we decided not to think. For example, I live here. I live in 200 meters from the place where all Hitler's parrots came. You know, this million people. I live in 200 meters from this we place. We should say that you're talking to us from Berlin. I'm, I, I, yeah, I, li I, I live in Berlin at the moment because no one will produce much of my films in Russia, of course. Uh, yeah, in Russia now, people produce only films about how great is our Russia, you know? And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not. If you, so, so we decided to, human very good with this. We block all, we don't, we don't know what happened. We don't, we don't know what happened. So we, we know how to block. We know how to decide not to think about it. This is what happened to us. Everyone has a pet at home, right? No, half of us, like, at least once a while, once in a period of your life, or always you have a dog or cat, and, and you know for sure they're amazing. They are friends. They, are, they, everyone of each of us cry when 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 our animal die, right? Each of us. If I remember, <laughs> so of course everyone. Be, why did you cry? Okay, your dog died. Why did you cry? Your cat died. Why did you cry? Because they are amazing. They know much more about you than you know about them. They understand you fully. They, in one, do you know that you need four seconds to understand another person? Four seconds, you need to understand, is it enemy or, or, or friend? You, because nature taught us. Animals, like for example, dog, need 1.2 seconds to understand, is it, is it enemy or not? We need, you see, we, we, this is why we love them because they feel what we feel. They know what we what what is suffering. Why we are suffering. They they know why we are in a good mood and a bad mood. They know what they even know where we have illness or not. This is why we love them. And what we do? Why we don't do this simple link? That not only dogs and cats are amazing. All animals amazing. Look, I made film in Aquarela. I made a film, we were jumping with camera below icebergs, below icebergs. And of course there are no people there ever been, right? Because icebergs, they turn upside down without alarm <laughs> before. They just decided to they turn. So it was dangerous. So we jumped with camera and we wanted to film how iceberg look there, our uh, behind surface. So below surface. So and you know what we what we is suddenly in the frame appears such small like seahorse, such small. And that seahorse made suddenly like this. <gasps> <laughs> like, <laughs> so and it was obviously that he was shocked that he sees something. He never seen before, and you see, he was like curious, like, and he was following us. He was following because he was like, "What is this? It's I never seen anything like this." He had emotions, you know. He definitely was fascinated by something what he saw, and we in imagine in the oldest parliament of the Europe two years ago they decided to make a new law 
that animals, the sheep were killed and we can kill them because they don't suffer. Then they don't feel pain. Imagine all this parliament of Europe making law two years ago, not 500 years ago, no, two years ago to support farmers that animals don't feel pain and they don't suffer. Look Gunda, Ben, look Gunda. And you see she is suffering. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I have to say that as, as, a, as a kid growing up in America, what I was thinking when I saw Gunda was Charlotte's Web. Do people keep talking to you about Charlotte's Web, the book and the movie? No, no, no actually you are first. <laughs> oh, well, it's, you know, it, 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 it focuses on a, on, um, a spider but also a pig that it's a brilliant pig and the, the little girl falls in love with the pig. And I understand you had a similar experience where you befriended a little pig as a child. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, people love me to tell the story. Even, uh, even I'm always a little bit shy because uh, it's like a little bit, um, yeah, it's, it's everyone has this memory in childhood. I don't know what do you remember about your childhood? Do, what do you remember? What is your first friend was? Who was your first friend? Oh, well, you know, my, my brothers and sisters, but we, we also had All a right. dog and when the dog died, it broke my heart. And whenever I see anybody's dog or cat died on the internet, you know, I start crying on Facebook because yeah, we're all so attached to it. But it did, did that help? inform your idea to really focus on Gunda? No, it was, it was actually a little bit longer. My mom always said to me, what's wrong with you? Because uh, like what happened is when I was four, I'm city boy from uh, Lenin in St. Petersburg. And by the age four, I was in, in, the, in the countryside and uh, it was very cold winter. And pe people I used to live with, they, they took the one month's piglet inside the house. So, and, and, and we, we, we just playing together, we were running and we enjoying life. And, and then he became my best friend, Vasya. So it's like really important person for me. And, and I knew he's smart. Now I know that animals, uh, pigs are number two in the intelligence ranking after chimpanzees. They are much more intelligent than dolphin or, or elephant or whale or crow or dog, or much more, much more. They are number two. So, but that time I didn't know, I just knew that he's very, very smart, very funny and beautiful to be with. And then of course, in Christmas time, he became dinner. So for me, it was just disaster. And, and I refused to talk to my relatives and I refused to eat meat. And I, so I, of course for Soviet Union, it just what is this? The kid who wants to be vegetarian himself. And for that time it was disaster, of course. But then, when I already was 20 and talked to my mom, she always said to me, I don't understand what happened to you, what's wrong with you, why you're not normal, why you always, what is this? And I said, you, it's your fault, you know, it's your fault because my first memory of my life is we were in the street and we were just walking on the street and it was a little bush and we were passing and I just, I just cut one leaf from the bush. And I looked, and mom, my mom said, what did you do? I said, oh, look how beautiful is it. And then she said, take one of your hair. And is it painful? I said, yeah, it is. So the same with Bush. It has, it feels pain. Don't touch it. Don't. So, so it, I guess this is why mom exists, you know, they, they exist for this, to, to give you most important in life, to give you to tell you something no one else will tell you, right? Yeah. Because if someone else will tell you, you will not pay attention, right? But if your mom says you, it's stuck in your mind, so, so. Yeah, I, I hope that's what my kids do. I hope that they care what their mom says. Because <laughs> sometimes I don't think they listen. But that, that brings me to this idea that your films have talked about humans uh, relationship with nature whether it was Aquarela or uh, Viva las Antipodas. Is, is this sort of, uh, are, these, are these related where you're, you're talking about how we interact with nature? Yeah, you know, 
it happened in a way in a way i i always i all my life wanted to make gunda but of course it was very difficult to finance especially as you know if you if you come into this idea and you said uh, what is your film about they said and what 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 are what is it any human in the film no oh no 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 so people don't want to finance your movie if there is no same with now i'm i'm trying to make okay listen let's let's put it like this um, let's say i'm people know me right filmmaker right in in industry in documentary industry and still i'm making new move i'm trying to make new movie now and i have problems because my new movie maybe there are no people there so and no 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 so Come on, you already know I'm able to make 90 minutes film without people, without voiceover, without music, without any story. I'm able to do it. Let me be. No, no, no. You know, better to have you. But what happened is uh, when I was making Antipodas, it's in a way it was written that it must be people who live on the opposite side of the planet, right? So let's say, you live in Chicago, in opposite point is oceans because all America goes to actually to Antarctica. So, but only one state in US goes, Hawaii goes to Botswana. So the, the, yeah, so, and when you say you go to Hawaii and you go to Botswana and you look absolutely opposite, absolutely geometrical, precise, and you look, who lives there and who lives there and what they are doing in that moment. And one of them is straight normal and one is them upside down. So you put them in one frame and you look what they're doing. This kind of people, aha, okay, we will finance this movie. But when I came to New Zealand, my first, first trip, instead of filming people, I accidentally filmed whale who commit suicide. Huh? And uh, when I film well, then I calculate what is opposite. And opposite of New Zealand is Spain. I came to Spain and it was no people around. It was just rock, huge, same size as whale and shape of whale. So you cannot imagine it. You cannot invent it. You cannot write it. You cannot, like, you cannot write it in a script, right? It just happened. It was magic. So someone, I, I call it cinema god, <laughs> cinema god decided to put stone in the opposite side of, and you cannot, you cannot miss it. You, you see it look like whale. It looks like whale. So rock looks like whale. So I start filming the rock. And suddenly appears that I have two big episodes, half of, a quarter of the film, no people. Just, just, and then I came to Chile and I saw men who has 200 ships. Ship, ship, or oh, ship. Yes. Uh, yeah, and he named them, each of them. Hello, Maria, hello, Anna, how are you? How did you sleep? 200. And then, <laughs> and, and, and condors flying around. And I see, okay, then I see that my film is full of animals. Then I came to Hawaii. Ah, first I came to Africa. This is very interesting. I came to Africa. I started filming human as, as, as I promised to, to invest in. And I started filming woman in Africa. Suddenly, 100 elephants crossed my shot. And one of them stopped very close to camera. And I just saw his skin. And I didn't know why I need his skin. Then I came to Hawaii. And lava in Hawaii looks like skin of elephant. Mm. So it's, and lava became character. So it looks, so it's accidentally, accidentally, it, my films became more about nature. And then I realized that the butterfly who was born in this rock in Spain, it was caterpillar first and then became butterfly. She was same equal as human in the film. So in the film, I create this equality when, human life equal to butterfly life and elephant and condor and everyone has equal position in the film and then i said it's a perfect 
perfect model. Viva Las Antipodes, like long life to everyone, long life to, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's far away. You know, Leonardo da Vinci said, to kill animal is the same as to kill human, but, and one day people will understand it, but then he said, but it will take time. It takes well, time for me. Well, this does yeah. seem like this is sort of a, the end of a trilogy, or maybe it'll be you know four films. And so let's 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 talk about. Sorry to get into the technical aspects, but that's what I was thinking the whole time. How on earth did you get so close to a sow and her babies? Um, it seems like you were you know down in the hay with them in, in a tiny camera. No, we don't use tiny camera because I I kind of. I'm a little bit conservative. I, 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 because everyone has tiny camera and everyone can, I believe professionals supposed to keep standard, professionals supposed to keep quality, profession, professionals supposed to make something normal people cannot do. Like uh, even professionals do not know how I made this, you know, and because it was a lot of study a lot of research, a lot of thinking, a lot of designing equipment. We designed similar to, we designed the home for them, the same as she lives, but this possibility that lens can move 360 degree, but camera and people outside of it. So only lens was moving there. So, and so we did not touch too much, but from another side, the key point was to respect her and dedicate time to her. Like if I will film you, I will not come with interview. I will come, I will come to you. I will uh, live somewhere close to you. I will spend a few months to know you. We go for coffee, we go for, and then I will be able to, same with Gunda. I came two weeks before. I met her every day. I came every morning at four o'clock. I, uh, before she wake up, we wakes up, I was waiting for her, then she came out, she smelled me, she, and then I, I was with her, and then when she goes out, when she goes sleep after sunset, I went home to, uh, to hotel. So this is the point, if you respect someone, and she knows I did respect her, I dedicate my life to her, time to her, and when, when kids were born, she did not, protest because she knew I'm, but I'm, I'm, let's say, maybe she smell I'm vegan and she, she agrees. <laughs> she <laughs> he's okay. I'm, he's, he's not okay. going to eat. Yeah. Me. He's not going to eat us. Yeah. So there's so much drama here. I mean, I, I, I couldn't explain to, to anybody how much drama there is in a non-scripted movie. How did you know that all of these incredibly dramatic things were going to happen? Or did you just say, let's take tons of footage and maybe something will happen? No, it was actually, we filmed only six hours total. Wow. So, but, but, you know, in fact, we all of us know the end of the story, right? We know that in certain point, kids will be taken and period. So in this particular farm, it's even privileged. They stay much longer than normal. In normal, they stay only one week, and then bam, they 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 let go to artificial. They feed them artificially, and so in this place, at least they, they were two week, two months with mom. So at least it's something. And uh, of course, we knew the, the 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 end of the story. So I am kind of different. Okay, you asked me most important question in a way, because I don't believe in story um, telling and storytelling in cinema, yeah. because if I, I always say, if you want to tell a story, just write a book, a tell a story, it's not the point to, to use camera. You use camera in order not to tell, but to show. That's my point. And then second point is, I always believe that we remember, if you, if you look back, I don't know, do you remember the story of Citizen uh, K? Do you remember? Oh, of do you course, remember yeah. story? Do you yes. remember story or you remember images? Um, well, I remember the story um, and the images, but of course the sled, it was a big one. I believe, I believe what 
if you look back to your favorite films and favorite story, favorite movies, you you probably remember like image which stuck in your memory. And, yeah. and this is my point. I, I believe each film has five, six remarkable images, which always with you and you cannot read of it. You cannot, you cannot, you will remember uh, eight and a half, for, there are five images you will always remember. This is eight yeah. and a half. You, That's interesting. You rem- yeah. So, and this is what I, I believe. The, the only way I knew I have this, I knew I will have the final and I knew I cannot repeat it. I knew it will be only one take. I cannot, otherwise I have to spend two more months with another Gunda, with another peak, always the same, yeah. but because it's only one moment when she's suffering, she's, her kids are taken, and I knew it should be one cut, uh, no cuts, and it must be one, one take without any cuts, how long it will take, whatever. So I knew it, and this is was important. And then I thought, okay, I will have this, for me, it was important to prepare my relationship with her that she allows me to film her. This is number one. And second, for me, perception is most important. Half people watch my film. So for me, important that people will watch this final shot and understand and feel what she feels. Because it's every mom will feel the same, right? Every will, mom will suffer if your kid will be taken, right? Mm-hmm. So... It means I need to build something before so the viewer will really feel this. So if I will just show the last shot, people will say, oh, interesting. But I, so I knew I need to film something and put before this moment that in the end, people, 70 minutes before, then people watch 15 minutes not stop and feel what she feels. This is my method. I, Sometimes it's not one shot, sometimes it's three, five. I don't believe there are movie with more than six, seven great shots in the film. I don't believe in such, there is no, in my opinion. Um, so that's why uh, I, don't, I don't think we need story. We need to make dramatic structures that all these shots yeah. works well, perfectly. So you knew you had the beginning and you knew you had the end, but you wanted to capture these important moments. Um, you know, the, the moments when when the runt, when the little baby is is trying to get over there and trying to feed with, with the rest of them, you know, every at every single screening, do people shout, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Did you exactly. ever feel like, I'm going to reach in, I'm going to put him over there? Did you feel the, the temptation I guess, to help him? I, yeah, exactly. I, I, in that moment, I was, two, two moments. First of all, when she killed baby, she she killed her baby and uh, of course idea was to run and help and ta-da. but then get off <laughs> yeah but then you say to yourself victor pigs lives in the planet million years before human right mm-hmm. if she does it she has a point she has her point for some reason she knew she smelled baby a few times she smelled him seven times before she did it she checked him and she knew she will not, this baby can, will not make it. She knew it. So, and uh, she also knew that he, she has only 10 active nipples. So she knew it will be problem with others and, and this kid will never make it. This is number one. And number two, this moment with Linda, with this limping one. You know, I always think like this, you know, there is a Titanic film, right? And I always imagine, what would I do there? What would I do? Because there are many possibilities. Or you, or you run and you push everyone and you jump to this <laughs> little, yeah? Or you, what do you do? Or you help others, kids and women, or what do you do? Or you are a violin player and you, or what I will do probably, I will film until last, person will live and uh, I will film until the end. This is my job, right? This is my job and I might have to film because if there are, if I have this privilege to see, I must film, this is my job. I have to do it and wow. yeah, I, because if I will not film it, you will not see it. I will help Linda, 
but millions, millions of such pigs will die every day and you will not see. And now I didn't help Linda, but you see. It. And you, by the way, when Linda is limping, did you see this magic moment when Yunda is helping her? Yeah, come on. It's a, it's a, so, yeah. So this many person, magic moments like that. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so you named the, the limping pig, the one who had the bad, you named it yeah, Linda? Yeah, all of them has names, all of them, of course, because, you know, we, we, they were born and we were with them every day. And of course, that, this is what happened with black and white. So when we producer didn't want me to make it black and white, they say, no, it's, it's so beautiful, the better than color and so on. And I, I made the test. I said, okay, producer, I love you. Come to me, watch it. This is number one. And she looked. And then I said, do you remember what uh, Christian made? She said, where is Christian? I said, okay, now watch here. And I saw the same footage, black and white. And she said, oh, this is Linda, this is Christian. This is, she immediately, this, she immediately saw personality of which of them. So hmm. black and white make you focus on eyes. Hmm. Black and white make you focus on, otherwise it's just adorable pivots. But black and white, you somehow magically see personality of each other. And there is another two more, more elements. Unconsciously, all black and white footage somehow has ageless, uh, like a stamp, like something yeah. will never die, something like document, not documentary film, but something like, like something which will stay, which will not disappear. And uh, yeah, and then also I wanted to make, put, pay tribute to this real cinema, you know, when the cinema, uh, when you just watch, you just like first cinema, black and white cinema, you just watch, you don't, no one tell you what to see, you just watch yourself, you know, and you know, yeah. It does have an ageless quality to see the black and white, but it, when, when I first showed it to my daughter, she said, we're gonna watch a film for an hour and a half that has no talking and it's in black and white. And she was entranced. She's a teenager and she was of course sobbing at the end. Um, it, it, and she understood exactly what you were saying in every scene without having to say anything. Say hello and this is, was moment when, you know what, this was of course, when I was making it in the end, I said, Okay, I have such dramatic end. What if I put violins? What if I put music, same as uh, Spielberg put in Schindler's List, you know, like an old planet will cry, you know? And then I said, mm, you don't do it. You just don't do it. You don't push. You don't, you don't push. You just keep it cinema, keep it cinema. And I, I'm, I'm glad I did not do I was very close to, I was very close to push. And then I said, no. Keep it clean cinema, poor cinema, just just nothing. Just simple like, and I'm glad I, 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 I stood with sound because my sound man amazing, you know, he he made it. I hope people, unfortunately, people didn't watch it in sound, Atmos sound as supposed to be in cinema because in cinema is amazing. In cinema and theaters is really amazing with Atmos sound. I guess, you know, there is Atmos is, something very important sound step in cinema. Like, do you remember when Dolby appears, like a lot of this, but I guess it's, it's more like color appears. Like, you know, when color appears, many years people didn't know how to use it. It appears in the 30s and then it took us like 30, 25, 30 years before we start making color films with dramaturgy of colors. Mm -hmm. It took us time to understand the meaning of color. And I guess well, this same story happening now with Atmos Sound. I see Atmos Sound films and I see it's very formal, like, oh, the, the bullet flies from here to here. Like, phew, <laughs> okay, okay, welcome. <laughs> you know, it's just all from you <laughs> and you feel like, okay. So I guess we, we, will, we, we need, directors need time to understand have to properly use Atmos sound. Um, 
Yeah. So yeah, when you see this in the theater, you kind of feel like you inside the environment of wow. animals. You are just there, and uh, we were very precise. We we did not even change because we realized we while editing we realized that about two hundred words we definitely distinguish distinguish from what Gunda say about two hundred different. And so every day we. In same situation, she repeat exactly this this kind of crew. So it looks for for our ear, it's, it's totally same. But if you put it in 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 graphic, you see they are not similar. You see that they are different. So and we found at least two hundred different words. So and we realize that if she needs to call them, she use for us it's same crew. But for kids, not the same. So when we put it in the, when we made it graphically, so we realized, aha. Uh -huh. So when she wants them to, to go to eat, she, she does this for you. When she go, when she say, don't do it, they, she does this. For example, it was wire, electric wire. And she every day was repeating, same. She was every day showing them that they're supposed to not touch electric wire. And she particularly said, uh, once she made a mistake and she touched herself this wire, right? <laughs> Remember that? So, so, so it means, um, yeah, sound is important. And that's why we, yeah. Well, I hope people can see it in a real theater at some point just to really enjoy that atmospheric sound. Um, in, in closing, what what do you want people to get out of this? I mean, this is not like a, a, a vegan propaganda film that hits you over the head. It's I think a much more um, it's a much more yeah subtle de def film. different. Thank you for this question. Of course, I, if I will make vegan propaganda, I will definitely uh, in, not include this moment when she kills baby, right? Or I will definitely make I will make voiceover and I will put my message. But uh, of course, I I'm not doing I. I, I, I'm not politician, I, am, I cannot make propaganda. It's my, I, am, I cannot make propaganda because it's against art. It's just simply, you go to a museum, you don't want to see here like, like Trump or Bush or an asshole. You cannot see, it's not art, right? You can, it's just against art. So um, even in opposite as well, you cannot, say Trump or, or Bush are brilliant. It, it just uh, propaganda is propaganda. Uh, art is art and I, I will never allow myself to do it. By my message, in a way I said, my message was not to talk about my message because I made it silent. But if you ask me, I would say it's very simple. Time, it's a time for Gunda, time for empathy, time for empathy. We have to realize we need revolution. We, have, we need revolution of empathy. We have to face that we are not alone. And we have to, and there is one more. I know in America, many people talking about global warming, climate change, and all this stuff. And, and sometimes like what previous, your previous uh, president decided to disagree with Paris Agreement, now you're coming back. Guys. We don't need to wait until Trump or Biden or Putin or Chinese president or someone else will agree. They will never agree. They will never agree with anything. If you really care about what's happening, you just need to stop eating meat and 30% of the climate problem will disappear right away to, tomorrow. Because in order to kill billion pigs a year, half billion cow, 50 billion chickens, trillion fish. What do we do? We, we kill them, we freeze them, we transport them, we pack them in order to feed them. We cut forest, we grow. So everything absurd, absurd. And on the top of it, we allow ourselves to kill. And this is more dangerous than global warming. We are creatures. Someone say, God make us in the top of pyramid. Show me your teeth. You don't have any tiger teeth. Oh, God didn't make you pun. God didn't make barbecue. 
God didn't make it. God make you naked, be naked, don't kill everyone around you. No, it's simple, simple like that. And, and don't forget, if, okay, you don't believe in God. Okay, me too. You, then you believe in evolution, but evolution will not stop. Evolution is evolution, it continues. It means today we are best, today we are strongest, today we are more clever and more brutal. But tomorrow will new creature appear because evolution will not stop. And that new creature might be more cruel than us, right? It might be more disaster, might be, they will eat our babies. And for, the, for their cappuccino, they will take our babies and drink, uh, take milk from our women. So stop, be silly. Stop, be silly. Evolution will not stop. And just time to empathy, time to, time to respect this world before changing. We are dominating and changing. Why stop changing? It's beautiful because of that. Look, every time you go outside of the city to the places you've never been, and people not touch yet. How beautiful is there, right? You like you, ah, you breathe like wow, what a beauty! Because there is not, there are no people there. So, so I see it, Paul. So one day nature will push us away and say, "Who finally those bastards disappear?" Nature will be happy without us if we will behave like this. And this is what's happening now with pandemic. It's a small sign for us. Stop be silly. Respect others. By the way, virus lives here before us, right? When we fight with virus, we say catastrophe with pandemic. Catastrophe are for us. For our virus, it might be not catastrophe, right? So you see, it's always, we need to always put it in balance. So we are not alone, period. Time to empathy. Time for empathy. And with that, I'm going to have a nice big bowl of lentils for lunch. Skip the exactly. meat. Exactly. exactly. Director, uh, Director of Gunda, Victor Kosakowski, thank you so much for talking to me and the Chicago Humanities Festival audience today. Thank you for light you have in your because <laughs> I talk, I talk six months with people, and they have horrible lighting, and you have proper cinema light. I, it's a pleasure to Thank see you. you in such light. Ciao. Same Have here. a nice Thank day. You. Stay safe. Bye -bye. Be safe, people. Be safe. Ciao. You too.